everyone, what's up? My name is Joss from Squiggles Reads, and welcome to the fourth video in my Thrillers and More Thursday series. On Monday. And I'm wearing my Pokemon on Wednesdays we wear pink shirt. I just really want to talk about these books because they're all really cool. Anyways, in this series I talk about books in the crime, mystery, and thriller genres. I will review them, talk about what I'm currently reading and what's on my radar. Without any further ado, let's get into the books. I'm currently reading In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware with a few other booktubers. We are almost finished with it, so by the time this video goes up I will probably be done. There is a woman named Leonora who has just woken up and is extremely disoriented and has the memory loss. We can deduce that something pretty terrible has happened. It's written in first person from Leonora's perspective and we find out that she is kind of an introvert, doesn't really like to leave the house, but she has been invited to a bachelorette party which is out in the middle of the woods in this weird glass exposed house. That's pretty much all I can tell you about the plot without spoiling it. It seems pretty standard but where I think this book shines right now is with its representation and I will be the first to admit that the crime mystery and thriller genres aren't exactly the most abundant in its representation. But in this book there is an Asian woman, there is a lesbian woman who is a surgeon, there is a guy who is very happily married to another man, and there is a woman who is experiencing some issues with breastfeeding at the bachelorette party, which is not an issue that we see explored in many books, let alone in thrillers. We can also tell just how much Ruth Ware loves Agatha Christie in terms of the way that some of the plot, the setting, is set up. And then in the middle of the book she brings up some issues with the title of And Then There Were None. If you research there were some issues with racial slurs and things like that in its history. So I am loving this book right now for its little things, but I will be doing a full review of it at the end of the month. I will be jumping into Ruth Ware's next book, The Woman in Cabin 10, which was just released. This is about a woman on a cruise ship, and on this cruise ship she sees someone who goes overboard and is confident that this person was staying in Cabin 10. So she consults with the crew on the cruise ship, and they tell her that in fact there is no one staying in Cabin 10, so that is the whole mystery of the book. This seems like kind of a more closed system premise in which like they're literally in the middle of the ocean so no one can leave and no one can come in. So I'm gonna start this right away after I'm done in a dark dark wood. I finished The Couple Next Door by Sherry Le Pena. It is about a couple named Anne and Marco Conti who are just at a neighbor's house having some drinks and some food and they find out that their very small baby Cora has gone missing and it is up to Detective Rosbosch to figure out what is going on. So this is actually the book that got me out of my reading slump because because it is so plot driven there was like no time to take any nuances, any time to set up anything other than the plot. And the sentence structure is super simple and that is something that I was grateful for because that's something that was necessary at that time so it makes it very easy to read. However it mentioned a mental health diagnosis and there were a couple of events that happened pertaining to this diagnosis that did not actually add to the mystery or the setup of the mystery at all and thus was kind of sensationalizing the diagnosis because it was clear that these events were just just extraneous to the plot and added for shock. Usually I err on the side of empathy in that everyone's reality is different and no one's is more or less valid, but in this case the author could have chosen to not include the events and the book would have been complete just as it is. So I did end up giving this two and a half stars because of the treatment of that diagnosis. I also finished Snowblind by Ragnar Jonasson, which was a buddy read with Kirsty from Melbourne on my mind. We are following the detective Ari Thor Erison, who has just finished police school and is looking for a job. The job market right now is pretty dismal and he ends up getting a job in the tiny fishing village of Siglafjordur that is only accessible by one tunnel and this puts a strain on his relationship because they become long distance. Nevertheless he goes and the first case he's assigned to is the case of a playwright that has apparently fallen down the stairs but seems more suspicious than that. And consequently he dies and there is the investigation of a murder. It lacked a little bit in this first 60% intention building because there was so much time taken between big anticipating events. But once it got going, it really got going. I can't see why it was set up this way, but I believe that with a few changes it would have been much more effective. The environment definitely helped because this is what I love about Nordic Noir, just the setup of the houses and the weather and the environment. And the fact that it was snowing and at one point no one could leave the village because there was a blockage in the tunnel. Added to the setting and just the whole cultural context of this book, I ended up giving it 3.75 stars. The next book I have been waiting for for a while and I am 
so glad that this book is out. This book is I See You by Claire McIntosh. If you guys remember, I previously reviewed I Let You Go also by Claire McIntosh and I loved it. I gave it four and a half stars. It was kind of reminiscent of You by Caroline Kepnes, which I also loved in some places. So I was definitely waiting for her next book to come out. This one is about a woman named Zoe Walker and one day she finds her own photo that's a little bit grainy in the classifieds section of a London newspaper and she shows the photo to her family and her family is like, oh whatever, it's just someone that looks like you. But every day after that there is a photo of a different woman in the classified section. So the mystery of this whole book is who's doing this? Who are these women and what does that person want from these women? I don't even really know, but I love Claire McIntosh's writing, so I can't wait to get into this one. Finally, I'm going to talk about another Nordic noir book that has been compared to Yo Nesbo, and I've been wanting to read this book for a while. It is the first book in the Lars Winkler series by Jakob Melander, and it is called The House That Jack Built. It was translated from Danish. Lars Winkler is our detective, and his life has kind of just been thrown into disarray because he has found out that his now ex-wife has left him for his old friend and former boss and now he is left to care for his 16 year old daughter Maria and they live together in a little run down apartment. He's just come back into the homicide department on vacation and there has been a serial killer that has unfortunately been targeting prostitutes which is an issue that has a lot of stigma and sadly because of the stigma doesn't show up in the media a lot. I have heard that we get a lot of insight into the killer's thoughts and there is somehow like a World War II backstory. I'm not entirely sure how that is going to work but I have been wanting to get into this for a while. That's it for this video. If you guys have any comments, questions, or anything else, please leave them down below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.